Bienvenidos a Uruguay. Bienvenido a Uruguay. Bienvenido a Uruguay. El fútbol acá en Uruguay es una pasión. La difusión mayor es el fútbol masculino. El fútbol femenino está en un debe enorme porque no hay apoyo, no hay difusión, no hay visibilidad. El grupo de las autoconvocadas del tambor, se puede decir, surgió cuando nos enteramos del Mundial. La solidaridad entre mujeres nos llama a apoyarnos en distintas causas. Y cuando vemos una situación que nos parece desigual o que nos parece injusta, tratamos de manifestarnos. Y como vimos que había muchos grupos, o muchas chicas, o mujeres, todas que querían estar apoyando al fútbol femenino ante la falta de apoyo que veíamos en el resto de los medios, Comenzamos a correr la voz y ahí se organizó un grupo. Y el 13 de noviembre fue que participamos. Me sentí muy orgullosa de que Uruguay pueda ser su segundo mundial en el país. Es una responsabilidad, pero es un orgullo también poder vestir y representar a tu país. El Mundial fue una experiencia muy linda, poder haber compartido con otras elecciones, eh, saber cómo juegan eh, y poder desarrollar nuestro fútbol en el Mundial fue muy lindo. Eh, sentí que, que fue muy grande el apoyo de la gente, que, haya ido, que se haya llenado el estadio fue muy lindo. Le dimos todo y la verdad que estamos muy lejos de lo que es un mundial, pero todo es paso a paso y yo creo que van a venir mejores, mejores oportunidades. I love to be a referee because it's never boring. I mean, there's always a new challenge to look forward around the corner and it keeps me on my toes, it keeps me excited, it gives me those butterflies in my stomach. Training is a daily thing. Like I consider myself as an athlete as much as the players that we are refereeing. So for me, when we decided to have a child, I hoped that I would be able to come back but I didn't know for sure. There's certainly a time after you know, giving birth where you feel your body isn't yours. It was a very kind of new experience for me. The first game I did was kind of really hard on my body um, and I, then you start doubting yourself. And that's a problem because as a referee, if you have doubts that you can do the job, there's going to be problems in the games, absolutely. You know, there's seven of us at this tournament who gave birth in the last year. To know that seven of us were able to successfully come back, I think is a real testament to first the fact that us as women are strong and we can, you know, reach our goals professionally as well as personal goals. And also a testament to the fact that um, FIFA and the referee department at FIFA believes that we can, we can do it. For me, it has always been football first. You know, I learned everything with a ball on my feet. And when I started my uh, coaching career, um, it was the biggest decision of my life. I was uh, mostly coached by male coaches, and I said, if there's coaches that are male and are doing so much in women's football, I want to be that woman that does the same, if not more, in the women's game. 
because the girls will relate to me even more. And I said, I have to inspire that girl child, that young girl that says, it might not be possible, you know. I have to inspire that girl child and say to her, trying is a step closer to you succeeding, no matter how hard and how bad it can be, you know. We might have failed in advancing to the next stage, but we didn't fail in bringing a courageous team and that's what it's about. It's for them to grow in the game. It's for them to make friendships and see that the world is big and it's out there for us to take over, take charge as women in football. No matter what, we still have a bigger picture and it is for us to still grow the women's game. It is for us to say, no matter the challenges that are there, we are not gonna stop. Whether people believe or not, we are gonna keep dreaming. I'm interested in women football because I realized everybody was talking about men football, but there were people talking about women football, but they were not enough. And I felt my presence would be more needed when I focus on women football and I could actually make a difference. One more question. This is my last one, one and it goes to both coaches. Okay. What I'm here to do is to be reporting more on the Ghana team that's the Black Maidens as they've made it to the set executive appearance in the and the 17 women to World Cup. Go beyond that and playing against Mexico so is not an easy thing. They are very, very inspiring. Every time I sit here and then watch them sing the national anthem, I get so emotional because I know how far they've come and I know the dreams they are achieving, attaining by just being on the field. So uh, there were a whole lot of um, obstacles they had to overcome, but maybe they should have gone through that because it gave them a tougher, now it's given them a tougher skin. The self-motivation that they have, it's just um, on a top-notch level. Putting images like these out there, also very, very important for girls to look up to. Very, very disappointed that the team didn't get the chance to move forward. But I'm so proud of them and I'm so, so happy for the stage that they were able to get to. We hope that the development will be there for them to be successfully moved into the under-20s and become these big stars that everybody is seeing and thinking that they would grow to become. Let's go Ghana! Let's go! Let's go Ghana! I think I love football because it's definitely my happy place when I go to the field and go to trainings. And yeah, it's just, it's a real freedom kind of thing for me, I think. We are a really close team. We're pretty crazy, we're pretty loud. We knew that we were a really good team going into the campaign, so we did set the goal to create history and get out of the group stage. Um, so when we achieved that, that was a surreal experience. No New Zealand football team has ever done it in any age or gender. So I think for us to you know, make it this far to the semi-finals is really you know, lifting the sport of New Zealand football. The news and all the newspapers and the radio, but yeah, the support back home has been crazy. Anything is possible, no dream is too big. Um, and I think you're capable of anything you can put your mind to. Todas lo decíamos de mi equipo que si pasamos de cuarto podríamos ganar las semifinales contra Nueva Zelanda. Eh, fue un rival muy difícil y bueno, supimos sacar el partido adelante y pasar a esta gran final. Me imaginaba ganar la semifinal. Desde el principio nuestras, mis compañeras y yo cómo, o sea, nos imaginábamos cómo iba a ser ese sentimiento y creo que ahorita que lo sentimos es algo muy lindo. Pues nos ha costado mucho trabajo llegar hasta, hasta esta final. Eh, muchas horas de entreno, muchas horas de, de bus. Muchas de aquí de las que estamos ahorita. Llevamos tres años de preparación para este mundial. Y creo que ha sido un gran paso porque venimos sumando desde hace mucho. Y vamos de, de menos a más. 
Toña, eh, sinceramente, para nosotras es como si fuese nuestra madre aquí. Nos ha enseñado que siempre vayamos con humildad, eh, que luchemos por nuestro sueño, que nunca dejemos de, de confiar en nosotras. Mi entrenadora nos ha enseñado en general a todas mucha, muchos valores. Yo creo que es más bien una mamá para nosotras porque somos la esencia de ella. Cuando empiece la final voy a, voy a pensar en que tiremos con el equipo hacia adelante, que nos echemos el equipo a la espalda. Yo creo que voy a estar pensando en que, en que vamos a ganar. Y nada, ahora disfrutar de, de esta medalla y de esa copa que tanto deseamos.